Hi, it's Rob from the Brush and Bulkham. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to paint a Nighthorn's Grim Ghast Reaper. So the first colour that we're going to use is Citadel Lead Belcher. We're going to use this to do the blade of the scythe and also the chainmail, which is coming out from underneath his robes here. I really do like these Grim Ghast Reapers. I think the poses on them are really great. The detail on them is pretty cool as well. It's just a basic robes and things like that, so they're not too hard to paint. But they have got loads of great details on them. Like so the chainmail poking out from under the robes to give it that kind of like solidity. While underneath that you've got all that kind of ethereal ghostly bit hanging down. It looks really really cool. So now we're going to use some Vallejo black and we're going to use this to paint his robes. Just want to get a nice smooth layer of black. Once we've got onto that, we can move on to the next colour. As always, if there's any night horn that you want to see painted up, just let me know and I'll get onto them because I've got quite a few sitting around in the wings that I need to get done. So it's not too hard to shuffle them around into any particular order. Next up, we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Baneblade Brown. I'm going to use this to do the trim on his cloak and his robes. So that kind of bit that goes around the head where it's got the studs in it, we're going to paint that with the Baneblade Brown. Do this as a little strip of leather going around the kind of hood of the robes. Just get a nice smooth layer on that. And once you've got that in place, we can move on to the next colour. Next up, we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Dryad Bark. I'm going to use this to do the shaft of the scythe. So again, just give this a nice smooth layer of Dryad Bark from one end to the other. And we can move on to the next layer with that. As I say, it's a great miniature, this. It's got loads of little details that are quite cool. But at the same time, there's not too much that will take you too long to paint them. They are a very, very quick paint job, these, because there's a limited number of colours. And the probably thing that takes you longest is maybe the ghostly bits underneath. I've got a tutorial for that that went out last Sunday, so that should be fine. Next up, we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Deepkin Flesh. I'm just going to paint the arms and the skull with this to give them that slightly off-white, blue-tinted colour. So when it comes to doing the road parts, it'll give you a brief introduction on how to do it on this. And I'll link up the full tutorial, which came out Sunday just gone. So you can see how it's done start to finish. So with the skin done, we're now going to start working on the ethyl part. So the black Templar contrast goes at the top. Beneath that, we're going to have Citadel Nighthorn Gloom Technical. Below that is going to be Nihilac Oxide Citadel Technical. And below that is Apothecary White Citadel Contrast. Now, you don't need to water these down or do anything with them. I just use them as they come. And you can get a decent effect with that. So the first colour we're going to use is Citadel Technical Nighthorn Gloom. I'm just going to put some of this around the edges of the robes. Now the reason I'm doing this is because when we add the Black Templar, it'll mix a little bit with it and just make it a little bit easier to blend in. So I'm now going to use a little bit of Black Templar and we're going to put this around the top of the robes. So because that's still wet with the Nighthorn Gloom, you'll be able to sort of mix that together a little bit as you're putting the Black Templar on. That'll help it blend it together with the Nighthorn Gloom and that'll make the transition from that to the full Nighthorn Gloom below that little bit easier. As I say, I'll link up the full video of that and you can see how that's done. So next up, we're going to use a bit of snake bite leather to go around the edges of the bit on the robe here. You don't really need to do too much to this after it if you don't want to, because the snake bite leather really does make it look great. Once you've got a nice layer of that on, again, we can move on to the next colour. Take care when you're going around the skull there because there is some little tricky bits. 
Use the very, very tip of your brush to get that in there. That should be fine. So with that done, we're now going to use a little bit of Citadel Contrast Apothecary White. I'm going to put this across all the knuckles and the ridges in the hands and the arms. That does have a few little ridges going down the forearms. So you should be able to kind of see the bones of the arms in there. So just give them all a nice coat of the Apothecary White. And the same for the skull too. Now we're going to use a little tiny bit of Citadel Nighthorn Gloom technical paint. I'm just going to do this and use a few little spots, put them into the eye sockets, and a few of the darker recesses on the skull. And also do the same on the hands too, a few of the darker joints of the fingers. Like so, a little bit underneath there. Like so. Next up, we're going to use some Citadel Deepkin Flesh. I'm going to start going around the edges of the ethereal parts here. Now, whereas usually I'd just be getting the bits that get caught by the light, on this I'm going to be doing this all over, so every angle you can think of is getting the edge highlight here. This just makes those edges stand out and gives them a bit of a bright glow, makes them look like a little bit more ghostly. This is also shown on the Nighthorn Techniques 3, which I'll link here too. So next up is Citadel Grax Earthshade, and we're just going to paint some parts of the blade for the side with this. Also add a little tiny bit to the chain mail. Chainmail's had a little bit of hint of null oil thrown on there as well, so with the Grax shade, that just gives it that discoloration, makes it look a little bit worn and old. Now I'm going to start working on the shaft of the scythe. We're going to use some dryad bark again. Just reapply that on the areas that may have had the paint worn off. Like so. I'm going to mix a little bit of Mournfang Brown with the Dryad Bark. I'm just going to go over some of the edges on this. Now, whereas I usually do the raised surfaces on it, what I'm trying to do here is thinking about an old piece of wood that's been used for the shaft of the scythe and the way it'd have the dirt and grime build up in those recesses in the, the lower areas. Maybe catching a light more, but it'd probably still be darker. And the raised edges would be lighter where it's been getting worn away, or maybe not worn away by ghostly hands gripping it. So, in that respect, I'm just doing the edges lighter. So, we're going to use Citadel Mournfang Brown here. This is just pure Mournfang Brown. And we're just going to add this to the edges once more. But this is mainly going to be going on the top edges. You're not really going to be going on the underside and adding it to those edges at all. Mainly just keeping it to the top. Getting that so those ridges are a bit more visible. Like so. Now we're going to add some Citadel Bane Blade Brown to the Mournfang Brown. And that is going to just do the final highlight on these raised edges just to make them stand out a little bit more. I've done the shaft of this side quite dark in comparison to, I think, how it's meant to be done. But I just wanted to have that light and dark contrast where he's got those really pale hands gripping the side and the dark wood of the side shaft there. So now we're going to use a little bit of Seraphim Sepia from Citadel. I'm going to use this to discolour the blade a little bit more. So while the Grax Earthshade added the grimy look, the Seraphim Sepia gives that an orangey yellow look as though the 
metal has started to discolour before it goes rusty. Like so. Now I'm just going to use a tiny little bit of Mournfang Brown. I'm going to start working on the leather on the front of the robes here. Now you're going to leave the snake bite leather showing through in areas where there's the recesses and around those studs and also any areas where it looks quite good already and you don't really want to go over it too much see there if you blob on a little bit too much paint you can just keep going back to that and getting the paint and wear it thin again now I'm going to add a little bit of Bane Blade Brown to the Mornfang Brown I'm just going to do a little bit of highlighting going on in this leather, make it look a bit chafed and old. Really want to get those edges, so each edge, the front and the back edge of it, looks worn, a bit scraped. Like so. Next up, we're going to mix a little bit more Bane Blade Brown with it, the previous mix. We're just going to do the final highlights on this leather piece. You can try and get the chafes in the most obvious places. Maybe try and put a few extra ones near the top, where it'd be catching a light and it'd make any slightly less scrapey bits a bit lighter, but there's not really too much need to do that for this miniature. Next colour is going to be Citadel Lead Belcher. We use this just to paint the studs on that leather piece. And we can call that finished. So make sure each of them gets a good coating. We're not going to do too much else with these. We just want to get them so they stand out. There's a bit of an eye catcher on the miniature itself. Like so. I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Null Oil. I'm just going to do this metal band going across the eyes there. I mean, it may well be a leather band, I've just done it as a strip of metal. Since some of the other night horns have got some pretty horrific contraptions stuck to their head, I figured a metal band wasn't really too much out of the realms of possibility. So now Citadel Deepkin Flesh, we're going to reapply some colour to these arms. You want to make sure you leave those shades and the technical paints in the recesses. So you're just picking out the raised areas, like the tops of the fingers, the knuckles, the thumb, parts of the hands and the arms. Just enough so that it makes those details on the hands and the arms stand out. And also on the skull. Now we're going to use some Vallejo White, it's just pure white, we're just going to pick out some highlights, much like we did with the Deepkin Flesh, and this time we're just going for the extreme highlights, which we just want to stand out that little bit more. Looking at the individual teeth, the cheekbones, the elbows, a couple of the larger, flatter areas, sort of the front of the forearms there, or the underside of the forearms I should say. Then the knuckles, the joints, tops of the fingers a little bit too. Make sure that you leave some of that deepkin flesh in there so you get that nice two layers of highlight. So now I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Typhus Corrosion. We're just going to weather the scythe blade. I'm not doing too much here, mainly around where the wider part of the blade is, where you've got that corrosion already showing on it. Do a little few bits on the top. And around where it joins onto the shaft. Once that's dry, I'm going to use some Citadel Riser Rust. I'm just going to gently dry brush this onto the Typhus Corrosion to get that orangey tint to start showing, make it look like the blade has started to rust. 
it's a bit old it's been left somewhere and started to rot there Now I'm going to use some Citadel Lead Belcher. All we're going to do is go across all the edges of the blade. You're mainly going to focus on that sharpened edge of the blade. Then the two top edges. You can do a little tiny bit along that ridge that runs down the length of the blade, but you don't really want to focus on that too much. If you want to, you can pick out some of the details on the blade where it's got those rusty ridges, or though it's been scraped there. You don't really need to if you don't want to. Next up is Vallejo German Grey. I'm going to start highlighting the cloak. So on here you want to think about where the light's going to be catching these pieces of cloth and highlighting those so you can catch all the ridges pretty much from top to bottom here. Just highlight these, get some flat areas on the top. You'll probably be able to add a little bit more shade to it. And that kind of ridge going across the back on the kind of lower edge of the cloak there. Now I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Mechanica Standard Grey. I'm going to use this to do another layer of highlights. Now this is mainly going to be to do some of the ridges and the edges just to make those stand out on the miniature. Once you've picked out those you can sort of spread the highlights out a little bit. Again where you've got the flatter areas you might want to add a little bit more to that. Also the ridge going across the back once again, towards the rear end of the miniature there. You can really get these cloaks to look pretty good with just a few layers of highlight. The final highlight we're going to use is a little bit of Citadel Dawnstone. This is just to make some of these ridges really, really stand out. So they're quite defined when you see the miniature. The final colour we're going to use is a little bit of Citadel Fugan Orange Shade. I'm just going to add a little bit of this to the rusty areas on the blade. This just gives them a slightly deeper rust colour. You're probably more likely to see. That just discolours the blade ever so slightly and gives that slightly more weathered and corroded look. And that is the finished Grimgast Reaper. It's a very simple tutorial that and really quick and easy way of doing it. Once you've got a knack of that blending you'll be able to do pretty much all of the night horns kind of ethereal parts on those. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video and if you have please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Also think about subscribing to some of our other social media linked below. Thanks very much. If you like the channel and enjoy the content and you'd like to support us you can head to our coffee page linked below where you can buy us a brew. Thanks very much.